How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is March 7, 2022, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. We've got a lot of news coming out of the Revolution pay-per-view on Sunday night, which was a very good show. Tons of great matches on the show, particularly I, I thought it was, the... I thought it was uh, pretty much a classic pay-per-view. Um, I don't know how to like rate it versus like the Chicago and the Minneapolis show. Um, but it was pretty awesome. I mean, Chicago was such a special night that it's with, with you know, the, the debut of Punk and with uh, Brian Danielson, Adam Cole. And that's a hard show. That was a hard bar to match, plus, plus that cage match, which was, you know, match of the year. So this, I mean, I thought this show was filled with great matches up and down the show. And it was a hot crowd, real hot crowd. Um, they did get tired certain points it is you know what we talked about before it was going to be it was a five-hour show and that's tough um the, the problem that's not a problem but it's a issue is that this company has so many guys and there's nobody holding them back and i mean so many guys that are so good with nobody holding them back that are all trying to steal the show and you have so much stuff that it's almost hard to remember it when it's over other than it's it's amazing to watch it's really an amazing spectacle to see all of these great matches one after the other after the other and it was tough for certain people because of the match order and um tony khan didn't even have the match order done when he went to bed last night um he said you know he was still coming up with but he was very happy the way it turned out um there were going to be spots i mean whoever followed um the young bucks whoever followed the, the punk match it was going to be tough i mean he went from the young bucks to the ladder match and so you you did have a real wild match coming out of it um baker and rosa had a terribly tough position to be put in um but you know there were going to be somebody was going to get that and i mean even the freaking six-man tag on the pre-show was was great so um yeah it was an awesome show but a lot of news on the show a lot of news about ring of honor um after the show i mean not a lot but a little bit a little bit i mean it seems like that there's um they're trying to um i i mean he bought it and he he doesn't appear that if he has any distribution like like he really didn't have an answer as far as like is Sinclair still gonna um you know do it is honor club still gonna be around like there's really he didn't really have answers to those questions yet um you know but he's planning on running it as a separate brand and he's planning on getting a roster for it he is going to be the booker it's not like it's going to be cody rhodes's ring of honor or anything like that um it's Tony Khan's thing. And, I mean, you know, Tony's a smart guy, obviously. Um, but, man, I mean, I, I worry so much because it's it's just, you know, between the, the football and the soccer and the pro and the AEW and now adding another thing. I mean, it's it's a lot. I just remember there was the only time I'm aware of a guy who booked two territories at the same time was Ole Anderson, who at one point, there was a time where he booked the Carolinas and Georgia at the same time, which were two completely separate um, companies, you know, with separate rosters, and sometimes you guys mixed and matched and everything. And I remember him saying that it was impossible, that it was just too much. You, you, you know, you couldn't do it. Now it's different. Obviously, now is very different in the sense that when he was booking, he was booking you know, probably between the two companies, four or five house shows a night, you know, maybe three in one and two in the other. Um, and obviously that's not going to be a case here. But he also, the amount of time it took to put together, you know, let's say he had, um, you know, um, whatever it was, you know, two TV shows in one territory and two TV shows in another territory. But that's all like, okay, this guy beats this guy in a squash, this guy beats this guy, send this guy out for a promo. They were, you know, there were angles here and there, but it was hardly um you know the kind of intricate writing um and time consuming writing and and things that a modern television show would have i mean then like you know you would do an angle every couple weeks and they would mean something and everybody would talk about it now you do an angle every segment 
So it's much, much harder. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's difficult. I mean, um, I, I, I hate with the ring of honor, you know, to, to, you know, and how much, you know, managing that roster, how tough that roster is to manage to add more stuff. But, you know, I mean, he's adding new guys. He's got, you know, what we had, uh, Shane Strickland in, which, which, which we already knew about Shane Strickland coming in. Um, but, um, you know, there's going to be obviously more people coming in. I would, I would expect. And, uh, William Regal as Lord Regal is in as some sort of a character, you know, some sort of, you know, character in front of the screen, you know, some, maybe something with, uh, Danielson and, uh, and, uh, John Moxley as a unit or something, which would be, if those two guys, you know, after this match got together as a tag team, I would have freaking tag team division and then put together that stable that they talked about. If that's the direction it goes, um, you know, and they added uh, several other things. You know, Scorpio Sky getting the TV title shot, which actually they did mention the other night uh, on Friday. Um, and then the winner of this, I guess they're going to do a big St. Patrick's Day show. Um, and that would be the San Antonio show, I believe, or the, Gar or the Garland sh uh, San Antonio show. And uh, Thunder Rosa is going to be, or the, the winner of Thunder Rosa and Layla Hirsch will be getting a title shot at Britt Baker on that show. And then um, I believe the latter match winner, which is, you know, Wardlow will be facing the Scorpio Sky Sammy Guevara winner. I, I that was the impression I got, but I don't know if that was outright said. So, all kinds of stuff coming out of the show. All right, take us through this undercard. Well, first we price talk. So, okay, so more of the Ring of Honor stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if he really said much else, but he was um, he felt that he was the only one who could. Um, He's the best person with the most financial resources who could keep Ring of Honor alive, you know, not just use the tape for library, but keep the thing alive. And then, um, you know, try, I mean, like he didn't, he didn't say like 100% that he was going to, but he, he certainly is pushing in that direction. And he said, like, you know, they have to get distribution and, um, you know, there's just a lot of deals I'm sure that he's working on, and they all have to come into place, but they've got the library, and CM Punk was really emotional, practically, about him getting the library and Vince not getting the library. Um, and Punk actually talked about the idea that, you know, Punk was critical, you know, of, of WWE without necessarily saying WWE, but about how, um, you know, a lot of the, the stuff that they have in their library is kind of hidden, and... Um, that the talent doesn't get any royalties, which was an interesting thing to say, because is AEW talent going to get royalties, or is this Ring of Honor talent going to get royalties if and when they do a streaming service? Because I think, obviously, that with the purchase of the Ring of Honor library and um, their own library, I mean, at some point, I mean, we know there's going to be either an in-house streaming service or they're going to be affiliated with somebody. I mean, it's a guarantee that that's just the direction the business is going. And if that's the case, um, are there going to be royalties? You know, because Punk brought that up. And uh, that's another question there. And, um, you know, I mean, it's a, it's also interesting, I mean, in the sense of uh, there's other guys with Regal out there. I mean, is Samoa Joe going to come in? Uh, Claudio, you know, he certainly was very, very praiseworthy of Claudio. Nobody brought up Joe. But Joe's talked about that that he he can wrestle. It's not like Joe's done wrestling. Um, so that's another guy. Whether it's for a revamped Ring of Honor or added, you know, Joe's a valuable guy if he's going to wrestle for AEW. But my God, like, how are they going to do a six-hour pay-per-view next? Because it's like, you know, look at the guy, like, like just to get everyone. And granted, there's a couple matches they they could have. You know, the hook match wasn't necessary, but, I mean, he just wanted to do a five-hour show. And, you know, you could have cut down um, a match or two. You could have. But it isn't like the, none of these matches were, um, you know, you had, again, like, you know, the the one that was more of a TV match. And he was the Ty Conte and uh, um, um, Jade match, Jade Cargo match. But even that is a championship match. And... You know, the idea is you want to get most of your titles on the pay-per-view. I think the they had every title except for the um, 
Sammy Guevara title, which, you know, because that they have that was defended on Friday, it's going to be defending on Wednesday, and they had Sammy Guevara in the six way, six man tag. So, um, you know, that, so that was, that, that was uh, another thing. And, uh, don't, I mean, you know, um, I think that that was the main gist of the Ring of Honor talk. So it seems like a lot, you know, there's a lot of, uh, things that he needs to work on and a lot of deals he needs to work on. And, you know, again, he just, he basically just got it on this week. So, um, it's going to be very interesting, but he's going to have two rosters to fill, which is good because he's got a lot of talent. And in that sense, I mean, I, I you know, however you, you use it, I mean, essentially it's going to be, I mean, do, do, do you make it like uh, Raw and SmackDown, except that the guys can go back and forth? Um, or do you make it like one is developmental and one is the, the major brand? I mean, those are decisions that he's going to have to make. Um, so, um, you know, there's just a lot. To, there's that That's a big story going forward. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio... We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.